Good morning. Let's call to order our Board of County Commissioners meeting for Wednesday, June 9th. Commissioner Sotomayor? Present. Commissioner Harris? Present. Commissioner Raymeyer? Present. Commissioner Dickinson? Commissioner Dunn? Present. All right. Now the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance is to the United States of America. Today's invocation will be led by Pastor James Calloway of the First Baptist Church in Ottawa. Good morning, Pastor. Good morning. Let us pray. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. From the lips of children and infants, you have ordained praise because of your enemies. To silence the four and the avengers. Into your presence, the Franklin County Commissioners are here to conduct the affairs of our county. We ask your blessing upon each commissioner, their family, the staff, and all county workers. Have mercy on our COVID-19 world, our state, and our county. Please continue watching over us and keeping us safe. Now, Almighty, let this meeting be productive and in a professional manner. In your name we pray. Amen. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Do we have any public comment? No. Okay. Uh, our consent agenda today is uh, to approve our June 2nd meeting minutes. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? So move. Like it. Commissioner Sotomayor? Yes. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner Dunn? Yes. Chair Waymeyer? Yes. Our first item of business lies with Larry Walrod, our planning and building director. It is a rezoning application. Good morning, Larry. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, uh, Commissioners. It looks like I am on the agenda this morning. Nope. <laughs> uh, the first item of business will be a consideration for the rezoning of approximately five acres. This was filed by uh, the, uh, well, this one, excuse me, I got this out of order here. This is a 12.53 acres with an existing home. They want to divide that uh, off of a much larger tract of land that had a very unusual uh, shape because it was five eighths of a mile deep and it's hard to get the uh, proportions not to exceed a four to one lot length to width ratio. The Planning Commission, however, does have the ability to waive that under certain circumstances as provided in the uh, county subdivision regulations. And as a result, of the, the County uh, Planning Commission did uh, approve the waiver of the uh, lot length to width requirements for this particular land division so that they could go forward dividing the existing house out and allowing the other son then to build a house nearby so they could take care of some elderly, elderly uh, parents. And uh, the Planning Commission has forwarded a recommendation to you for the approval of this rezoning request and directing uh, staff then to amend our official zoning map uh, accordingly. Otherwise, it's a pretty straightforward uh, land division. The only exception was the uh, overall lot length to width ratio. I have uh, nothing further to add unless any of you have uh, questions. Larry, does that other frontage, is, is that, it looks like it's all trees or something like that. The rest of that frontage there. That property, it's over 300 feet, so okay, that's, it, it, that's it has a pretty good frontage on it. It's just that it's so deep, right, right. to get to that uh, four to one that you'd have to have roughly a 750 foot of frontage to meet the you know the four to one lot length with the requirement. Okay, all right, any more questions for Larry on this one? 
Looks reasonable to me. I'll, I'll make a motion to approve. All right. Second. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner Dunn? Yes. Commissioner Stoudemire? Yes. Chair Weimeyer? Yes. Second. Of the business also resulting in application. This is a request filed by Mr. Funk to rezone approximately five acres uh, from an A1 to the RE residential estate zone. Uh, this matter was also considered by the uh, Planning Commission, and in doing so, they realized that the remainder tract then would not meet the minimum for our agricultural zone district. That's the, uh, the remainder of the tract after you take out the five acres. And consequently, it had to go to the A2, which is a transitional agricultural zoning district. So we were rezoning both the uh, remainder and the five-acre tract that's being sold. The purpose for this uh, division is to allow for the sale of the five acres and the construction of a new home. Again, the uh, Planning Commission has uh, forwarded a recommendation to you to approve this rezoning request and directing staff then to amend the official zoning map accordingly. This one's pretty straightforward. Any questions for Larry? We would like to approve rezoning application 2104-1859 and amend our map accordingly. Motion to approve. Second. Commissioner Dunn? Yes. Commissioner Stoudemire? Yes. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Chair Waymire? Yes. All right. And our third item is also rezoning application. The uh, third matter is a uh, consideration for a, a piece that's going to be annexed to the city of uh, uh, Richmond. Princeton. Uh, excuse me. This is for the new store that's being proposed on the east side of 59 Highway across from the cemetery. And the result of that would be uh, they will, uh, this would allow them to move forward with the purchase of the property, as well as starting their construction. Uh, and I think that uh, we've tried to work with the city to expedite this so we could get this every, everything started here in a timely manner. And that was a request from the uh, developer themselves. Their architect had submitted a lot of plans and different things to the county, and we have reviewed those, and it would be consistent with our requirements, which are very similar to what uh, the city has. And I think the uh, working with the city attorney that we have uh, reached a, a reasonable uh, recommendation for the rezoning to go from the RE, residential estate zone, which is presently there, to the C2, which is a commercial zoning district. So we're trying to cooperate with the city and move this project uh, uh, forward. I think it's going to be a benefit to the county as well as to the city. Again, uh, the recommendation from the Planning Commission was for the approval and uh, directing staff to modify the map accordingly if you choose to approve the rezoning from the uh, RE to the C2 zoning district. And there's been good engagement between the county and the city of Princeton on this. I believe they just had a meeting this week and Commissioner Dickinson was there and Paul Bean with FCDC was there and so um, I know the city commission down there is there anxious to move forward on this. So um, would definitely recommend approval. This will allow them to move forward with uh, trying to get the service extensions, sewer and water. So uh, we feel that it's a real positive effort on behalf of the county to cooperate with the, the city as well as the developer in this manner. Okay. I'd like to say that thank you, Larry, for this, because this is a sign of what, what we want to see in the public works 
I mean, not public, uh, planning and zoning and public work, but it's the communication with the, the smaller towns and the organizations. And, and this was a deal of him trying to find a way for that to happen for him, not throw a roadblock out for him, but to actually work with them because it's going to benefit all of us. So. Ways they can, not reasons they can't, right? Yeah. Yep. I agree. All right, well, if uh, we're in support of this, someone would need to make a motion to approve rezoning application 2104-1863 and amend our county zoning map accordingly. So, um, go ahead. So move. I'll second it. Commissioner Saldemeyer? Yes. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner Dunn? Yes. Chair Waymeyer? Yes. We both want to see that happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got a spot right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we are certainly happy to see it move forward. And I've worked closely with the clerk to make certain that we have uh, kept them informed of all the, the steps that we've gone through and have outlined for them the procedures for the annexation in this case. So I think uh, everything is kind of a, you know, a, a go. Uh, unfortunately, it's got a, a little billboard on the property that they're going to have to deal with. and. I don't know what the lease arrangements are on it, but they're going to have to do something with that darn thing. Yeah. All right. The next item of business is also a rezoning request to rezone possibly six and a half acres from an A1 to the RE uh, residential state zoning. The purpose for this rezoning is to basically uh, satisfy the estate. These people want to divide the property giving the house and 6.6 .6 acres to the daughter, and the remainder of that would be given to their son. So you see the large uh, remainder tract, uh, several acres more, but the values are pretty close to the same. And consequently, uh, they feel that they've treated the, their children uh, appropriately, uh, even though it may be some time before they actually deed uh, this over to the kids. Again, the Planning Commission has reviewed this and find it to be consistent with the comprehensive plan, as well as our zoning and subdivision regulations, and I forward a recommendation to you to approve this rezoning request and direct staff to modify our official zoning map. Uh, this is a pretty straightforward rezoning request. We process roughly uh, upwards of 100 of these in a year's time. And uh, I don't think there are any uh, hidden agendas here that uh, we need to, to be concerned with. All right. Anyone interested in making a motion to approve application uh, 2104, 18 and 60? And... Uh, Amend our map accordingly. Take the motion for it. Second. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner Dunn? Yes. Commissioner Stottlemyre? Yes. Chair Waymeyer? Yes. This item is a final plat. Go ahead, Larry. The uh, next item, as you've indicated, Mr. Chairman, is a final plat for the Punk Estate subdivision. This is going to uh, give consideration to the five acres that you just approved for rezoning. There has already uh, been an opportunity to divide this property under the uh, uh, provisions of our subdivision regulations, wherein you're entitled to a one-time lot split, and after that, it's a subdivision plat. So that's the purpose for this subdivision plat, rather than it being a, the more traditional a lot split. Uh, it does satisfy all the requirements of our zoning and uh, our subdivision requirements, and therefore the uh, Planning Commission has approved that. We would ask that uh, you authorize the chairman to endorse this, accepting all easements and, and rights of ways that are shown on the face of the plat. Right. Anyone care to make a motion to that extent, then? Take a motion to approve. Second. Commissioner Dunn? Yes. Commissioner Sotomayor? Yes. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Chair Waymeyer? Yes. And another final plat. Go ahead, Larry. This is uh, somewhat unique in that it's uh, 
two lots that are presently in Wheatland Farms that are owned by the same uh, uh, owner. And he would like to modify the boundary to take in the tree line on the parcel that he's already developed on. The other tract would be vacant. It's it vacant today, and it will remain vacant unless uh, someone else wants to build on it. The applicant has no desire to build at this time on that particular lot. The lots do meet all of our minimum uh, requirements for the, the three-acre uh, single-family residential zoning district, as well as our subdivision regs. So what it is is just a, a boundary line adjustment, basically, but since it was platted, it requires a plat to undo what was previously done and a new plat that shows what's being proposed today. So that's the reason for this uh, particular subdivision plat. And the Planning Commission has approved this and would recommend that you authorize the uh, chairman to endorse the, the plat, accepting all easements and vacating easements that were previously there uh, as a part of this uh, new subdivision plat. Is there a motion to uh, authorize chairman to endorse the final plat <coughs> and uh, accept the easements right away? Sorry. Right. Commissioner Dunn? Yes. Commissioner Sotomayor? Yes. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Chair Wainwright? Yes. All righty. Well, I have the, uh, these originals here for you to sign. Okay. We'll get that after the meeting. Thank you, Larry. Thank you. Go to staff reports. Derek? Yeah, so um, Don and I, as well as Casey, are going to Wellsville um, shortly after this meeting. We'll be joining Paul Bean over there, um, about 15 other folks for a strategic planning session. Um, as all of you are aware, Wellsville's just exploding um, with development, and uh, the purpose of it is to just see what we can do to, I think they're doing a great job up there, but see what we can do to help them maybe come up with a plan, kind of a strategic growth plan. Um, Paul's done a great job of quarterbacking all this, has the, it's the Docking Institute, correct? Coming in to help with that. And so uh, I think it's gonna be a fantastic use of time and I'm excited to do it. And so that'll be from 10 to two today. Um, as all of you are aware, we have a study session on Monday, going to be a fairly substantial study session. Uh, we'll, I think our auditor is going to come. Janet will talk to you about that, but then we'll have the uh, first discussion. It's not our first discussion, but the first discussion involving potentially integrating the historical society into the visitor center. Uh, the board asked us to uh, put a committee together. We did that. It had Commissioner Waymeyer and Commissioner Harris. We met with a couple of Historical Society board members. There were staff from both organizations present, um, and we came up with a recommendation on how best to do that. Uh, Monday, we will present that recommendation, and then uh, we'll hear from a couple volunteers, hear from the Historical Society, and just start the discussion on how we can best do that integration. And then after that, um, and I'll let Janet get into this, as all of you've got your budget books, but we have our, our individual budget meetings where um, I think for you, Commissioner Harris, that is really about as in-depth as the board gets. And we typically walk through basically every single line of the budget during those meetings. And so it's a great time to ask questions, get feedback. I know our budget hearing, which is normally in August, I think it'll be September this year. Um, that's normally, I mean, the last few years, that's been a 10 or a 12 minute meeting, if that, because we've already poured through the budget with a fine tooth comb. So uh, a lot of the, the work goes into it, at least from the board's perspective on Monday and Tuesday. So 
got your books. If there's anything you need from either of us in advance of that, please let us know. Um, I believe that's all I have, Cole. Thank you. All right, Casey. All right, Paul, anything? No, David Lee. All right, so uh, we continue to work on on roads and, and washouts and whatnot uh, that were damaged with the uh, floods here recently. Uh, since last week, we've uh, repaired or replaced uh, five different culverts. That's uh, crossroad tubes and uh, some driveways. Uh, we fixed uh, at least 10 different washout areas and um, uh, five different ditching related projects that, that we need to take care of. And then um, I think it was yesterday we removed uh, some trees from a creek channel on Alabama that was uh, really negatively impacting the drainage in that area. Um, over the next several weeks, we're going to continue this sort of work. Uh, we've got uh, four crossroad tubes that we're going to be replacing uh, along with the associated ditch work for those projects. We have two uh, strictly ditching projects that we're going to be doing. Um, and then we've got a couple of entrances to install, but that number is going to change. It seems like uh, every week we're getting multiple requests for entrances, so I anticipate, anticipate that number to go up as well. Um, <clears throat> so that's going to handle our the next couple of weeks, and we've got some of our larger projects are on the horizon. Um, just this morning I got an update from um, um, Circle C Paving on the Chip Seal project. They're, the weather has delayed them, so they're now looking at, uh, they're about a month behind. Uh, we're hoping late June, early July for this. Looks like it's gonna be late July, early August for this, which is still well within the time frame that, uh, uh, that we were hoping that they would be here, uh, but it's not gonna be quite as soon as we had hoped. Uh, so that's, that's coming up. Um, I also received the proposal this morning from SCS on the landfill project, and so I will be uh, reviewing that, and, and uh, I'll certainly share that with uh, Derek, um, and then when we're ready, we'll, uh, we'll be bringing that to you probably within the next couple of weeks. Um, uh, so that'll be good to get that one under underway. I've got a call in to uh, CFS on the Jackson Road Bridge uh, deck project to see how we're coming with that. I've got field check plans, so we should be ready to go to bid on that uh, fairly quickly. And then uh, a lot of my time has been spent on FEMA documentation. Lately, yesterday, I was able to submit the uh, category A, uh, which is uh, debris, submitted that to our KDEM representatives, and they'll be going over that and then ultimately submitting that on to, uh, uh, to FEMA for their approval. Um, and now I've turned my attention to the Category C, which is the roads and bridges, and, and um, that, that's quite a big uh, project there. Uh, just on the debris removal, we had over 1,500 personnel hours, um, and with the roads and bridges, it's going to be well over 10,000 hours. So um, uh, there'll be a lot of, you know, hopefully FEMA reimburses us for everything. Um, but I anticipate it being a fairly large number once we get that uh, finalized and submitted. So um, that's that's my report for today. Question for you, David. Yes, sir. Uh, is, is that material there in Ranto on the rails of trail right away? Is that the material they're going to be using? I believe so. Yeah. They they um, they have stockpiled uh, at at three or four different locations. Yeah, it's quite a pile. I figured I drove through there and it's a little red. Yep. So I figured it was something we would use for sure, but yes. figured it'd be that. And uh, and I know this is just nothing you guys did, but it happened. There's several asphalt places that's been washed away from the flooding. I don't know if we're going to try and get to all of them before they. We have uh, we have been doing a little bit of patching, <laughs> kind of in, in between some of this stuff, uh, and we will continue that. Uh, we have got. Um, a couple of spots where we're going to have to have Kilo come in. That's well, is one of them below the Middle Creek Bridge there? I haven't specifically looked at those. It's pretty big. Um, but we will. I can't see you guys trying to patch that one. It's pretty big. So we'll. Uh, Not we'll deep, see. but it's big as that tape would. Or bigger. We have we have a few of those locations, and one of the crossroad tubes that we've got to replace is is on. Um, 
know uh, where Virginia or Vermont Road kind of curves and then into uh, Virginia down there. We've got a uh, kind of a large specialty tube that we're going to be putting in in the next couple of weeks. And uh, that area that we'll have to cut out to be able to do that work, we'll have to have Kilo come back in and, and, and patch over that. It's one other part, but I mentioned it maybe before, but it's, I know it's been frugal with the, all the rain, but is that dip there in Vermont and, and Rock Creek, right there in the city of Rantoul, where it makes that big dip, there's a pretty good chunk going out of there, too. Not a dangerous thing, but it's before we chip it. Right. No, we'll be, uh, we'll be looking at that. And we've also, there's a couple of uh, structures on John Brown just east of uh, Princeton that there's some pretty good dips coming into uh, those bridge structures that we're going to, um, we're still trying to decide how we're going to tackle that, but we've got to shore up um, each end of those bridges uh, and then take care of those, um, those approaches in that. Uh, so those are, those are all things that are, that are going to be coming up in the next um, uh, so. And now that we've got a little extra time, uh, Due to the timing of the chip seal, that'll we'll be able to get those things done. Thank you. So, as Derek alluded to, um, you have your budget books in front of you. Um, the auditor will be here on Monday to just briefly go over the audit results with you. He's um, given Derek and I the fifty thousand foot view, and he's going to come and and get a little closer with you guys and let you know how the audit went this year. Um, so your budget books do not have audited numbers. The numbers that are in there for 2020 are what, what we have. So there could still be some changes here after we get the audit results back and we get those in there. Um, as you know, that we usually try to work off a solid platform of, of audited actuals so that we can get a, sound, a solid foundation for the next budget year. So. This is really out of the realm of what we normally do, but putting together this, but we can't wait any longer to get this in front of you guys to be, start reviewing these budgets. Um, I visited with all the department heads yesterday and they're all on the schedule that we've made. Um, and I'll email you guys out the schedule that we plan to use to, um, to work off of when the department heads will be here. Um, of course, there's always some adjustments to that as we go, too. So um, I try to make it as flexible as possible um, by adding some different ones in at the top and bottom that, you know, maybe Derek and I cover. So if somebody takes a little longer or, or is a little shorter, we can kind of add in and, and make changes as we go. So while it's a guide, it's not <laughs> set in stone. So um, as we get those results from, uh, from Rodney next week on Monday, um, Amy and I will be going back and putting those audited numbers in. And if we have um, some that need change, we will get those out to you guys. So um, if you have any questions about the budget book, feel free to give me a holler. Um, I'll, I'll take a look at it. And like I said, um, we've gone over this as best we can. Derek and I have met about um, each one of these budgets. Um, and feel like it's pretty good right now, but there still yeah. could be some changes. And, and I completely agree with that. Um, and, and this is not a critique of Rodney at all, um, but he, I think, bumped us to the back of the line this year in terms of, I think we were one of the last organizations he audited, which is just fine, but it did kind of put us a little behind our schedule. But we I completely agree with her. I, I don't anticipate any major changes to those budget books, but I also know that Janet and I did not do the same level of tweaking to like some of the smaller stuff that we normally would because we're just waiting on those audited numbers. So I would go a little more firm in saying I'm, I'm pretty well certain we'll tweak some small things once we've got those audited numbers. But what you've got in front of you is, is a great representation by and large of what it's gonna look like. Like they're not gonna be big things that get added, it will just be tweaking some of the smaller stuff based on audited actuals from 2020 as opposed to what we believe our actuals were. 
And so. so it's something that Rodney had to do this year for us and pretty much every other organization he audits is the single audit is what it's called. And it's for if you receive over $750,000 from the federal government in grants. And so almost every single organization that Rodney audits, he had to do that for. So he was trying to make his schedule this year to keep like school districts together, to keep counties together. And so he normally starts with a lot of school districts just because they have to have their budget done at a different time frame than what we do. So it usually works to have them done first. Well, then they took longer, which pushed us back. So <laughs> it definitely was um, a time consuming process for Rodney this year. And he did have a lot more questions of us um, just based on that single audit. And he said it's not a lot more work, but it is a lot when you're looking at all those different programs and deciding which ones, um, according to the rules, you have to audit. So he has started the process to get our um, federal audit uploaded, and I got the login yesterday, which he told me I would get before um, it was finalized online. So that is is being completed at the same time. So. Uh, a lot of work too that the public doesn't see. I mean, uh, our auditor comes and obviously he does the audit and, and, and we ask him to be as critical as he can be on us. But Janet is kind of the county's liaison to Rodney when he's doing that. So that takes a lot of her time, but also the department heads. I mean, they all have a job to do, like a day-to-day -day job. And while Rodney is here, I mean, it's, it's frequent that he has questions about something. So Dustin will need to drop what he's doing for example to come sit down and and go through that so just I appreciate the work that county staff puts into this process because an audit's a you know it's a fairly significant undertaking and it is a critical part of our budget process I mean we that is the backbone of the 2020 actuals are the backbone of the you know the subsequent year's budgets so and that's to say nothing of the work that they have to prepare ahead of time of Rodney coming different departments have to bring, you know, various receipt books and all this. I mean, I probably have 10 like bankers size boxes of information down in my office from what Rodney works with where David's office brings down from solid waste and um, public works and noxious weeds so he can review all of those reports and the sheriff's department brings over receipts for all their different things they have going on, like a fender registration and, and, uh, you know, things like that. So it is a lot, a lot of work that our staff puts in for the audit to, to bring back a really good quality pro product from Rodney. So again, if you have any questions about the um, budget books or anything like that, um, as you start to go through them, um, don't hesitate to give me a call or shoot me an email, whatever way you like text me i think most of you have my <laughs> cell phone number so all right uh, commissioner's comments and board reports Don? uh i won't go with all the chamber and deal with the wells wells i'll just hit i'll do that later but one main item of it was the discussion about our meeting today up there and how appreciative they are and uh, i sat down with paul the other day i want him to educate me too so and i think it's going to be a really good deal and I don't think he knows how much work Paul put into it and brought in the energy to help pay for half of this project to be done. And I make sure the chamber up there realize that too, you know. So that, that's it. Roy? Yes. Uh, Friday morning, Midland Railroad's been uh, storing old cars or rock pulling cars on the railroad and they decided to move them out uh, Friday morning without telling anybody I don't think and they blocked uh, 59 highway for from an hour and a half to two hours and Sand Creek Road was blocked for the same amount of time I had a lot of complaints the businesses in there had a lot of complaints I wish the sheriff was here because I bet they got calls. And uh, anyway, uh, Midland Railroad has not been a very friendly outfit to work with. Uh, 
all the farmers along the Missouri River Road have had problems with them, and, and they do what they please. And, and here they go again. They block the highway for that amount of time and, and uh, cause a lot of confusion. Um, nobody uh, flagged anybody uh, to tell them what's going on or have a detour or anything like that. So I was uh, pretty disappointed in the railroad uh, for blocking the road. Uh, I did go to the seafood bureau, which the uh, Brought me back to reality that there is food still out there. And, and I think the chamber did a good job trying to provide uh, opportunities for a lot of uh, activities downtown and, and uh, went to Legacy Square there Saturday. So uh, that's about all I got. All right. I don't have anything I need to add either. So with that, we look for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor, sir. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? We're adjourned.